God want us to prosper? That's a, a great question to ask. Um, or does God want us to have a lot of stuff, is the way I like to say it. Um, no, is the answer. Stuff is not relevant to God. But the prosperity doctrine says to us that God wants me to have stuff, have a lot of nice things. My question is, if God wants that, then why doesn't he just make that happen? Because he can make that happen. And if he can make that happen, then wouldn't he make that happen for all of his children? We know that God is not a respecter of persons. What God has done, he's done for us all. And he's accomplished everything in Christ Jesus and provided everything we need for things that are eternal. And um, we need to understand that God is not invested in making us have stuff. Prosperity teachers tell us to put money in offering baskets. If we give at certain times that a, a Kairos moments, they call them special moments, if you do it at this time and give money in a basket to a ministry at a particular time, God is then going to cause your life overflow with stuff like it's going to fall out of the sky. I'm watching this happen for 40 years. It never falls out of the sky. The wealthiest people on the earth are not Christians. So you don't need God to make money. You need business to make money. You need uh, a product to make money. You need a skill to make money. God just doesn't make money fall out of the sky. So uh, the prosperity gospel is a false gospel. It is not the gospel of grace. It is not the gospel that Paul preached. It is not the gospel that Jesus preached. When John the apostle said, I wish above all things that you prosper and gain good health, this is a man saying what any one of us would say to anybody we love and care for, that we hope their life is comfortable, they hope their life is filled with good things, we hope their life is healthy. Uh, that's all John was saying to who he was writing to. Does God want us to be comfortable? Well, God wants you to be faithful when you're comfortable or not. Paul wrote to us and said, he learned therewith to be content. I have learned that when I'm abased, which is when things are hard and you have nothing, or when I'm abounding, when things are comfortable and you have plenty, he says, in both states and cases, I have learned therewith to be content. That's a lesson we have to learn from him. The next words Paul says there is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What all things can he do? I could. I could live abased and I can live abounding and live pleasing to God. It's not relevant if I have or don't have. The prosperity message is, says, you know, whatever you have, God expects you to have more tomorrow. And then when, wh wherever you are in tomorrow, he expects you to have even more. He wants you comfortable. Um, no, God wants you faithful. God wants you to, to be maintained. Uh, God says in tribulations uh, you'll have in this world, but, but I've overcome them. Paul said he was beaten, he was thrown in jail, he was in despair, he was shipwrecked, he was whipped five times. This doesn't sound like a man who's having a very comfortable life. He says and in all of these things, none of these things moved him. Do you think God didn't want Paul to be comfortable? No, God wanted Paul to be faithful. So the prosperity message is a malarkey for men to manipulate you, to give them your money. They're millionaires not because of the prosperity gospel, they're millionaires because you give them your money.